Uh, we have some exciting things to talk about with the Academy program, some things, some updates, and some things we want to share. Hopefully, by the end, um, you'll want to possibly participate or, or pass it along to friends, others, teammates. If you have any questions uh, afterwards, any, any, uh, anything you want to, to ask, here's our contact information. It's also on the website. So real quick, um, just a little bit about each of us. Uh, so you have a little bit of background. Um, I grew up playing in, uh, we both grew up playing in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, just like your kids started out at the youngest ages in rec, playing rec soccer. Really didn't start moving up to competitive until 11, 12 years old. Um, and I played on, we both played on lower level competitive teams. The first higher level competitive team I played on wasn't until I was 16. Um, but beyond that, had uh, great years in high school, um, all state in high school, went and played four years in college, uh, two time All American in college, played one year pro indoor, five years of pro outdoor, and directed a club in New Orleans for about 20 years, moved up here in 2017, and uh, been happy to serve our community. Um, other notable thing uh, since I've been here we raised a million dollars to improve uh, Burbank the Burbank complex with uh, lighting for fields and a championship field some of our some of our uh, high schools middle schools didn't have a home field and so those schools that don't public or private will be able to to have a, a home field that is um, more than just an open open space where they they do practice and then 2019 last uh, summer we ran southern regionals and for the greater baton rouge area generated 18 million dollars in economic impact so that's uh, it for me andy you got anything uh to introduce yourself there please yeah so i'm uh andy Smotherman. um Kind of the same boat you kind of mentioned. We both grew up in Arizona, played club soccer there, high school soccer there. Um, went on to play college soccer in South Carolina for Francis Marion University. Um, after that, went back to Arizona and played um, in some PDL teams, um, second division teams in Arizona. Um, it's about it for me. I just can't top what, uh, what my brother Louie did, but yeah, that's all right. So one of, the, one of the things that we're excited about, we have recently um, become a partner in development with the Houston Dynamo and Houston Dash. Uh, Houston Dynamo is a professional team in the, major, in the major soccer league and the Houston Dash is a female professional team um, here in the state. So we're excited to work with them. It's basically a collaborative effort to, to offer information, exchange information, coaching education, curriculum for players. And so one of those is this uh, soccer starts at home. So for all of you and anybody in our club, uh, you know, we uh, learned from a young age. I know we did growing up where we were told, don't kick the ball in the house, don't throw the ball in the house. Well, this uh, guy is, is uh, world renowned, of, about uh, starting soccer in the house. So I'm just gonna show you a quick little clip and a little bit what he's about and what we're look to implement and incorporate into our um, Academy and Rec Plus programs. So I took two or three balls and I put them in every room of my house. And Your wife loved that. It, she was a bit apprehensive in the beginning, but when my boy would stand up or address the ball, I would discourage him from kicking it, but I encouraged him to just pull the ball back using the right foot, the left foot. And it wasn't really till a couple of years later when I had my second boy that I started to figure it out again, connecting those dots. You have these two boys who in essence become your guinea pigs. Yes. 
And I started realizing now that at a very young age, when the football or soccer world has been telling us that skill acquisition happens from like nine, 10 and above, and I'm seeing that my two-year-old, my three-year-old can do things with a ball that nobody could imagine. Good, 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 good. The yeah. idea, Bayer says, is that soccer starts at home. Good. And it starts when kids are barely out of diapers. We see the fruits of his test case while his son, Kaito, now 11, practices with his friends after school. He's definitely way above average for his age of his ball mastery. He's very confident on the ball. Um, he takes players on. Um, Bayer believes if parents do what he did, put a few little soccer balls in the house when their child is just learning to walk, it could be a game changer in player development. You've got Messi, Ronaldo, Suarez, Neymar, but even in the United States, Landon Donovan, uh, Clint Dempsey, Christian Pulisic, when you read their stories, you'll see that basically soccer did start at home with those kids at, from a very, very young age. So you're looking at the trajectory of some of the greatest players in the world and saying, what do they all have in common? Yes, and for me, it's as clear as, as the nose on the end of my face that it's the, it's the parents that are the most important part for development. So one more little clip about Tom Byer. So he he uh, was heavily involved in the whole soccer movement in Japan. I don't know if any of you have seen or followed any of the, the soccer on the world stage, but uh, women in particular in Japan, uh, the men's team as well. A lot of it is based on the foundation of him being over there for about 20 years working on uh, foot skills and a lot of it starting at home or starting in the playgrounds, uh, a lot with uh, parents and not parents that are knowledgeable about soccer, um, just basically uh, putting about their feet, encouraging them not so much to kick it, but to move it around. Hi, I'm Tom Byer and welcome to the Houston Dynamo Dash Soccer Starts at Home program. So today's first exercise is gonna be the slide. Now, the important thing about these ball mastery drills is, is that we're trying to create quick feet. Think of the right leg and the left leg as teammates. One moves, the other follows. The left moves, the right follows. So first one, we open up our stance. It's a static, we don't have to move anywhere. We just open up our stance and then we're basically sliding the ball right, left, right, left. You kind of get a little rhythm going and points are, get the rhythm and occasionally head up. Remember, repetition is key, and the more you practice, the better you become. Number one, that's, uh, that's one of those things. What we'll be doing is uh, putting out little videos about what we'll be covering each week in the Academy and Plus. And we have been doing what we have as the BRSC 20 moves. Um, but we'll also be incorporating the Houston Dynamo and what Tom Beyer here does with Soccer Starts at Home. Here's just a little bit of what he does. Um, pardon the, the Japanese, I don't understand it either. One, two, three, outside. Each knee, son, out. Each knee, son, outside. Each knee, son. I'm picky. Okay. Next one. Okay. Yeah. So, go back here. So basically, um, you know, if we're doing these things in the house, outside the house, in the driveway, uh, wherever, wherever you can, and uh, getting them touching the ball more and more often, the odds of them, you know, all these players and the players he developed didn't uh, come out of the womb uh, soccer players, but 
by touching the ball a lot at young ages and even as early as two, all of them and then children and the Jabal team, men's and women's, have all been successful um, utilizing some of these techniques. You know, and they with soccer, with the feet being the farthest part from the game, that this and, and this early um, child education by, by working with the ball at their feet helps them cognitively, confidence, physical coordination, um, so lots of different things, you know, and so these, uh, he's got neuroscience scientists backing him up, suggesting that, you know, in order to help get our kids off the gadgets that they want to do all day, um, something, fall in love with, a, with a soccer ball, play the soccer ball. But here is, um, basically our, our program, uh, information. Uh, Andy, you want to go over that a little bit? Um, so yeah, so basically it's, um, the academy is designed for players looking for, you know, a highly structured environment where they're going to get the good training and they're going to get uh, professional coaching and they're going to follow a curriculum every week and for the season and they're going to follow our academy pathway. And we'll talk, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but as far as like training format, you know, we divide them into similar age groups similar skills, we kind of mix them up a little bit as well to get them playing with um, players that are more advanced than them. Um, again, like I mentioned, we have the curriculum focusing on, you know, technical work, tactics, um, getting technical stations, whole part whole into practices, a lot of training games. And uh, I mean, we have a lot, we have like eight small fields on the field, we have a larger field out there as well that we can use. And that's for the, uh, to start off with the program information. So basically, here's some of the benefits that we emphasize with the academy program. You know, for all of the coaches, we train them regularly uh, to make sure they're on the same page. We go over the lesson plans, what they're going to work on each week so that it's consistent. Um, trying to progress each week with different moves and turns so that they're competent in, in many of them. Also, the same thing with ball striking um, technique. You know, it's things where if you learn how to strike a ball or pass a ball incorrectly for many, many years, it's very hard to you learn those skills, undo, uh, incorrect technique and try to implement correct technique. So we will be looking to make sure the players learn um, those proper techniques. When, as far as the footwork goes, everything we do, uh, it's real easy for them and you all to show them and have them do it at home too. So the coaches that we're gonna have um, and the types of games we're gonna play, uh, you know, it'll be a structured environment but the, the emphasis will, will be on development versus, versus winning. Um, any uh, questions from anybody so far on any of this? So a little bit of what we'll incorporate with the Soccer Starts at Home is our 20 moves and turns. These are not new moves and turns, but these are just moves and turns that, that uh, we've all done over the years and we put them together, uh, turn, moves and turns that I put together uh, many, many years ago, but we just put them in an order and so a lot of times what we'll do is the kids will learn them a couple, three moves each week. And uh, some of them who, who read this and, and try more of them and get them all down by the end, you'll see them popping them all out quickly, efficiently, effectively.
And all of these we will be putting on video as well as uh, the soccer starts at home, fast footwork uh, activities. So here's something about yeah, our so games. And you want to go over this? Yeah, so for, for the inter squad games, which is when we have them on Wednesday nights, and that's for Academy for and they go from 515 to 630. And what we do is we play on the small fields that we have out on the big fields. And we usually play like 4v4, 5v5 games. We mix players up but again with different skill levels. Um, we try to make even teams that we can. So we'll, play some even games. Uh, we have boys playing against boys, girls playing against girls. And we sometimes we can mix the boys and girls together to, uh, to have some good games like that as well. Um, as far as uh, competitions go, we do play, you know, 77 games on weekends, a couple each month. We have uh, the U and eight, U nine players uh, participate in play days each month. And we will have some games with uh, against some rec teams during the season as well. Okay, for the uh, curriculum, and again, this is what we kind of focus on each season, and we'll work on different things every week. Um, but as you can see on the screen, so we're looking at like age six, you know, a lot of ball control, a lot of dribbling for them, passing, ball striking, and a lot of different games that they're going to incorporate into uh, each practice. Um, when you get to U8, again, a little more advanced, you know, receiving ground balls inside, outside the foot, block, tackling, shooting, uh, you know, 1v1s, 2v1s, so a little bit more advanced at each age group. And again, same thing for when you move on up to like the 12 and 16, they get into maybe more details, more aspects of the game, technical and tactical, um, you know, switching the point of attack, playing out of the back, 3v2s, 3v3s, um, and everything that they've learned prior to this stage. Yeah, as far as the uh, the program goes, again, so for the academy, it goes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Again, the trainings are on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.15 to 6.30. Um, the, again, the inter-squad games will be on Wednesdays. Rec Plus will train on the Tuesdays and Thursdays or one of those days that they register for. And uh, again, those games and practice will be on field 23 and 24. So we did um, previously the ages for Academy at Burbank and Independence uh, was U5 to U9. We expanded it to U16. We just finding more and more the recreational teams when they get to 11, 12 and older, they have fewer and fewer teams to play. And there's usually a great disparity in the in the competitions. So when they're playing against teams, we're finding each week, uh, even the rec teams are either pulling people out or they're getting beat up badly. And we still will offer that through rec, but figured if we can provide more training for these kids, a lot of kids that want to just get ready for middle school ball or high school ball maybe aren't ready or wanting to play competitive. Maybe folks want to have a little more time free um, on weekends too. This is a perfect opportunity for them to get training, regular training, and then come out and um, play games that we can control. We still bring in teams for them to play, but we can set up the matchups and move players around so that the competition level um, 
there's as much parity as possible. We want to challenge them, but we don't want anybody getting blown out or just blowing people out. So in Zachary, this past spring, we, we started a academy program for nine-year-olds to 13-year-olds, just because there was demand out there. And we had 30 um, in those ages this spring. Uh, so we figure, uh, let's try it uh, at Burbank as well. And there was a question in the chat about, you know, will it be offered at Independence? And I would like to get back to Independence. It's just very difficult um, trying to manage it under the circumstances with, with COVID and staffing um, to have it in, in uh, too, many, too many locations. So the cost for the program each season is, is 350. And again, that covers Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then twice a month on the weekend games, whether it's friendly, intra-squad, intra-squad, or against rec teams. Some of the staff coaches. Um, so I started up the Zachary Academy program this past spring. And I'm going to go still go over there one day a week, but I'm going to be helping at Burbank um, one day a week as well, along with several other coaches that are here. Um, and if you all know of any or happen to be former um, high school, college players, have an interest in, in learning about the coaching end of it, and want to do it more formally, we're always looking for good coaches. They don't have to necessarily be um, coaches that uh, are professional coaches. We have coaches who have licenses. We have coaches who we train regularly. We have coaches that are former um, professional college players. So um, we'll provide all the tools needed for uh, anyone who, who may be interested in participating and if you are please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us whoops so something i wanted to mention um, that we're doing you know currently we've been in in phase two and phase two has been extended um, but for academy and competitive uh, while a lot of other programs were not able to run this summer, we set up a whole social distance training program. So we have it set up out at the fields where the kids come out, they have a, a station that is, is at least six feet away from the next player. Um, we ask that folks wear, and the kids wear the masks and coaches wear masks to the, to the fields. We don't have the kids train with the mask on because we don't we don't feel it's safe or healthy and everything we've been told by medical professionals is um, the training and playing outside is about as safe as we can be with them. Our coaches, however, when they're in close proximity to the kids, they will wear a mask. So the, so the type of social distance training we'll be doing is a lot of foot skills, a lot of technical skills, and we are able to do uh, some level of playing. So for example, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two and numbers up. So for example, four against two or three against two or two against one where we can minimize um, contact. And to date, um, we have been using this healthy roster program for everyone in competitive and Academy Rec Plus where an email goes out to every participant in the middle of the afternoon and it asks a couple questions about uh, if you've been exposed or around people have been exposed and then a list of symptoms and if all the check the two questions and the check box is that the answers are no, then it tells you you're safe to go out to the fields. Obviously, if players don't feel well, we ask them to stay home. Uh, same thing with coaches. 
And so to date, you know, our trainer, we have a full-time athletic trainer. She's out at Burbank. Um, we trace every case we hear about, and there have been some, but none of them at the park. They've all been uh, from somewhere else. And anytime we hear about it or they don't pass healthy roster or they call and notify our trainer, we get on the phone, we, we trace it, we keep them out until we uh, confirm uh, what the situation is. So we're very, very proud of that. It's been a couple months and uh, no cases at the park. So with that, um, and before, before any questions, you know, I just want to say that, uh, you know, we all have a lot of, of choices in what the extracurricular activities are for our kids. Um, just now and moving forward, and, you know, I'm an example of it, my brother's an example of it, you know, most individuals and a lot of our kids are just not going to grow up to be big big, strong people that can play some of the sports out there, some of the major sports out there. But the one thing about soccer that is unique is boy, girl, young, old, big, small, short, tall, everybody can play soccer. And if you just develop skills and stick with the game and work hard, you can play soccer at a very high level. So very high level, whether it be high school, go on to play in college, which we have a lot of players do each year, or even even uh, the next year, uh, I mean the next level, which is uh, professionally. 